Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. For premium picks, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Very strong weekend for us. Uh, part of what we do here online is shameless self-promotion. If you are a Dwyer VIP subscriber, yesterday was great. You won big with Demetrius Hopkins over Charles Whitaker, and you did so at a minus 170. Keep in mind, here online, we're not just trying to pick the guy who wins, we're actually trying to pick plays, payoffs, deals where we can profit from the casino. Demetrius Hopkins delivered for you if you're a Dwyer VIP subscriber. Here online, with the videos, Edna Cherry, the underdog, delivered against Vincente Escovito. In fact, he got the knockout. I encourage everyone here to look at the pre-fight video I made on that fight concerning Edna Cherry's chances. Let's talk about the big fight. Adrian Broner's victory over Gavin Reese here again. I encourage everyone to look at the pre-fight video, right? I would never take Broner as a 50 to 1 favorite. But, as we said in that pre-fight video, Adrian Broner had a chance at a knockout even though Gavin Reese had only been stopped once in his entire career, and that was in the 12th round of a fight against Andres Kotelnik in which he started showboating. Right here, the matchup just didn't favor the fight going for several rounds. And Reese gets knocked down, gets back up. Reese gets stopped, I believe, in the fifth round. Right? So there again, you should have done more than okay on that fight. And you should have gotten significantly better odds than 50 to 1. Understand the under in the Broner fight was something like a minus 375, right? I'm sure Broner by knockout was substantially better than the 50 to 1 on books like Bovada, for example, online. Okay, let's talk about what's significant, though. I know the rest of the world right now is taking you through what happened round by round in yesterday's fights. Let's pick the biggest name, Adrian Broner, Let's try a different approach. Rather than forget this fight, I want you to view this fight as the blueprint on how to beat Adrian Broner. In particular, I want you to focus on the first two rounds of this fight. I've long said here online that Broner keeps his feet too wide apart. That Broner, quite frankly, doesn't move as well as he should. That there is a way to beat Adrian Broner. Now first, let me say this. Read the post-fight interview of Gavin Reese. Right? Gavin Reese tells you in that post-fight interview, and this is a guy who's been around, that Adrian Broner hits very hard for his weight class. Now understand, Broner looks like someone else, style-wise. He looks like Floyd Mayweather. But there's a huge difference between the two. In fact, a couple. Broner doesn't look like young Mayweather. Broner has never had the foot speed of young Mayweather. Right? Understand, too, when we say foot speed, let's be a little bit clearer. I'm not talking about just going from A to B. Straight line foot speed. This isn't the 40-yard dash. I'm literally talking about foot speed in moving all over the ring. Right? You know the guys with the blinding foot speed. Manny Pacquiao comes to mind. Because he's hard to pin down. He's outmaneuvering his opponent. In fact, that's a better word than foot speed. 
the ability to outmaneuver, move around the ring. Now understand that young Mayweather, and we're talking about the Mayweather who fought Hanero Hernandez. We're talking about the Mayweather who fought Diego Corrales, right? Young Mayweather moved a lot better, and I mean a lot better than Adrian Broner. Understand young Mayweather typically was able to outmaneuver his opponents. You look at the Diego Corrales fight, and it's not just a Mayweather left hook fest. Mayweather literally is much faster than Diego Corrales in the ring. He's moving all around the ring. This is a different Mayweather than the current Mayweather who loves the ropes and who lets the action come to him, right? Younger Mayweather moved. You couldn't go into a fight against younger Mayweather and outmaneuver him the way Gavin Reese in the first two rounds of this fight against Adrian Broner outmaneuvers Adrian Broner. Now the problem with copying old Mayweather is the same problem you would have copying old Ali. Understand old Mayweather has the knowledge base, has the experience that comes from being able to outmaneuver guys when he was younger. Right? So as so understand as older Mayweather is standing around letting the Victor Ortiz's, the Ricky Hattons, the Miguel Cotos of the world come to him. Understand Mayweather knows what it's like to need to move. And who knows, maybe he can even move like that for a round like or two when he needs to. Adrian Broner doesn't have that knowledge base. I know he moved against Vincente Escovito late in the fight. But that was after he had solved the puzzle. Understand, since he's a counterpuncher, he literally needs to kind of like read you before he's comfortable doing things. The only punch that an uncomfortable Adrian Broner can throw with power, in my opinion, from distance early in a fight is that left hook. Right? That's the only punch where he feels comfortable enough as he's trying to figure you out in the angles, throwing early. Right? You're not going to see him lead with straight right hands early in a fight. He doesn't do stuff like that until he's well into a fight against Tony DeMarco and he feels comfortable and he has figured out the punch pattern. And because he doesn't have that maneuverability, because his feet are too wide apart, against a taller fighter than Gavin Reese, who has length, and length's a big part of the equation, who can pop a jab and outmaneuver him and not show him much other than hand speed, a jab, and maneuverability early in a fight, that guy would bank several rounds against Adrian Broner. What do I mean? Let's talk length. Let's talk guys who can fight long and stick a jab. Think about how Ali fought Sonny Liston. Right? Think about today trying to fight Vitaly Klitschko. I know Klitschko doesn't maneuver that well. He maneuvers better than you think, but I know he's not blessed with Ali type foot speed. But think Vitaly Klitschko. If I'm fighting Vitaly Klitschko and I really can't move that well, right? I have my feet wide apart and I'm in a tight defensive stance. And Vitaly Klitschko is hitting me with jabs like he did against the Nigerian Nightmare when he came out of retirement to win the title. Right? Sam Peter. Just imagine Vitaly Klitschko hitting me with jabs. And he's long. 
So when I throw that left hook, he can just lean back. Right? He's long. So I have to actually try to find him in the ring. I can't just rely on counter punches and reaction. Because he'll hit me with a jab and he's leaning. Right? And so I can't set up shop without maneuvering around the ring. And if all I'm throwing from distance is a left hook, right, possibly an uppercut, the uppercut's not going to get there because of the other guy's length. He's not short Gavin Reese. He's a taller fighter leaning back, leveraging his height. If the guy knows to block my left hook, and if he's outmaneuvering me in the ring and he's more active than me, pumping a jab, then I'm going to be in trouble. Right? In fact, let's go one step further. Let's think about Ray Leonard against Marvin Hagler. Understand, if a guy fights a Ray Leonard fight against Adrian Broner, Broner's going to have trouble. Because Ray Leonard would outmaneuver Broner while Broner's trying to get the lay of the land for at least the first three or four rounds of the fight, right? Because Ray could move, Ray would pop a jab. Ray wouldn't be close enough for a deconstructionist like Broner to figure out. And a guy who moves, who's aware that Broner's only coming with a left hook from distance, would be able to block that punch. Now, the difference between Broner and Young Mayweather is that Young Mayweather would be able to follow Ray Leonard around the ring, right? Young Mayweather had wheels. Young Mayweather actually moved in fights, right? The problem with copying current Mayweather is understand current Mayweather is conserving his energy. Maybe current Mayweather can move. The point is, Mayweather understands the importance of movement. I'm not sure if Adrian Broner does. And Adrian Broner has been fighting guys. DeMarco, Reese, who literally, after a few rounds, are right in front of him. Movement isn't an issue. And Tony DeMarco, although DeMarco was taller than Broner, DeMarco was trying to outmuscle Broner. And that plays into Broner's game. Because Broner's actually a puncher who's a up close boxer. Right? He's not a boxer who moves around the ring. And so, my point is simply this. I've said it before. I know I sound not credible. Let's hope the fight happens so either I get shut up or I get vindicated. I've said before that Mexico's Miguel Vasquez, that's a name you need to cling to. I'm telling you, this guy's underrated. Taller than Gavin Reese. Moves better than Gavin Reese has a jab, more importantly, brings tempo into the ring. In other words, when you're in the ring with Miguel Vasquez, you're fighting at Vasquez's pace, not your pace, right? What I'm saying is simply this. A guy who can move and stick a jab and change directions, Andre Durrell, in a different weight class, and Andre Durrell would probably be up 3-1, 4-2 on Adrian Broner. And then you have to ask yourself the question of whether a cautious counterpuncher who doesn't move that well like Broner will be confident enough closing the show. And I'll say this. He was able to move in straight lines on Vincente Escovito. That's the fight. That's Exhibit A. If you believe Broner can move forward and actually catch up with the guy. 
But understand that the Ray Leonard's of the world, the Andre Durrell's of the world, the Ali's of the world, they're setting traps for you. Think Ali Liston too. In other words, when you start to get desperate and you start to charge at these guys, you'll be surprised how many of these guys with great jabs have anchor punches behind the jab can literally, as you're slipping the jab, you think you're slipping the jab, they have the trap set, right? I'll give you another example. Mike Tyson, Buster Douglas. Mike Tyson starts to charge Buster Douglas. Why? Because Douglas is operating behind a jab, right? Mike Tyson slips the jab, so he thinks. Buster Douglas has the uppercut hidden behind the jab. You need to ask yourself if a mover, a Ray Leonard type, an Andre Durrell type, a guy who can move, an Ali type, Miguel Vasquez, a guy who can move, if he builds up a lead on Adrian Broner, does Broner have the front foot game to come back? I question that. Okay, so let's celebrate Adrian Broner winning the fight. I'm certainly not a hater. Broner made me money last night. Broner delivered the KO. Broner looked great, no question about it, against a tough competitor known for an excellent champ. No question about it. But Broner was taller than Gavin Reese. Right, Gavin Reese unfortunately got lured into a fight where he was a sitting duck for left hooks. Right? What happens if Broner fights a guy who understands spacing a little bit, who could be outside that left hook? I'll say this. As good as Broner looks, and I'd love to see Broner against Floyd Mayweather, current Floyd Mayweather. I think younger Floyd Mayweather beats Broner because I think Broner wouldn't be able to find younger Mayweather in the ring. I think Mayweather is Broner, younger Mayweather is Broner only with much more mobility. And understand that extra mobility adds a different level of game to the mix because then that mobility allows you to operate from different angles. Let me say this too. The people watching this tape and I know I'm going to refer to a fight that history's forgotten. Look at the CompuBox numbers, please. From the Adrian Broner, Daniel Ponce de Leon fight. I know Broner won that fight. Look at the CompuBox numbers. You're going to see a fight in which an opponent actually brought volume to the party. Understand, Ponce de Leon is underrated. Ponce de Leon, quite frankly, has beaten Johnny Gonzalez, which is a bit shocking to me, right? Ponce de Leon came in with Balia. Now understand, Ponce de Leon himself doesn't move that well, right? He's not going to be confused with Andre Durrell anytime soon or Ray Leonard, right? But he came in with Balia on Adrian Broner. Just ask yourself as you look at those CompuBox numbers, what would have happened if Ponce de Leon behind the jabs and the volume was able to add maneuverability, foot speed, right? He was standing there. Adrian Broner was able to, you know, literally know where he was. What happens when Broner doesn't know where you are? I believe Broner beats the Brandon Rioses of the world. In fact, quite frankly, I privately believe Broner hits harder than Brandon Rios. If you're a stationary fighter and you're up on Adrian Broner, you have little chance. In fact, let me say this as an aside. I think Mike Alvarado would have a better shot on Adrian Broner than I do Brandon Rios. But I'll say this. If you're not stationary and you have length and you have a jab that creates volume, Right, and you're able to force Broner to turn. 
I believe you have a chance on Broner. As good as Broner looked last night, he's not unbeatable. Let's remember, the one thing I know in boxing is that styles make fights. That Miguel Vasquez, Adrian Broner fight has to happen. And I'm just telling you when it does. I'm rolling with Miguel Vasquez in that one. Right? A tall guy who can literally, as you throw punches, he has you timed. Think young Ali. He has you timed where Ali would be fighting Broner. Let's assume they're the same weight. I understand one's a heavyweight. Ali would be fighting Broner. And he'd be looking at Broner's left hook. Do you think for a second that Ali would allow Broner to just stand there with a raised shoulder in the middle of the ring looking at him? Not even close. He'd be moving away from that left hook and he'd be hitting Broner with jabs. What's Broner's next move? Because both men would know that Broner's a counter puncher. He's not a lead puncher. He's not going to come across with a uh, lead straight right hand. Both guys would know that. Not only that, Ali would know that he could literally throw punches while backing up. So he would know that Broner would have to find him. Right? And so all I'm saying is this. As Ali would be banking early rounds behind a jab. You tell me, how would Broner catch up on the scorecards? Does Broner have that skill set? Right? Broner is a very hard puncher. Is he a hard puncher with limited movement that we don't notice because he has great boxing skills up close? Or is he the kind of guy who, against an open fighter operating behind a jab and volume, can actually hunt that guy down? That's the question. Young Mayweather could. Can current Adrian Broner? I picked Broner last night, obviously, but I have questions. I'd take Miguel Vasquez over him. Quite frankly, the question needs to be asked, too. Let me get way outside the box here. Broner against Amir Khan. Ask yourself, if Khan comes out, understand Khan can gallop. If Khan comes out, sticks a jab, right? Khan, unlike Danny Garcia, can actually throw very straight punches, right? If Khan comes out and sticks a jab and makes his height an issue, and just comes out and decides that he's going to fight kind of like he fought against Andre Kotelnik, the same Kotelnik who ironically knocked out Gavin Reese, right? Ask yourself, how exactly does Adrian Broner close the distance if the guy won't stand and fight him? How does Broner overcome that gap in length? Right? His ability to do so will determine whether he is a very good fighter or a great fighter. Young Mayweather was a great fighter. Broner has a chance. But he hasn't shown us that yet. As he's been fighting the Gavin Reese's of the world. Okay? Let's see him against a guy with length, movement, and a jab before we take this analysis further. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Hope you profited handsomely yesterday, especially off the Edna Cherry fight. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online and visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and dwyervip.com on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, private channel. Thanks for watching.